too often people quip, you are what you eat. Nutritionists often cringe when they hear that because it's too simplistic and it leads to wrong conclusions. You cannot become smarter by eating brains, nor become more muscular by eating more protein. And this is generally true when it comes to fat in the diet as well. You're not going to have more or less body fat because you had a high fat or low fat diet. The amount of body fat on your, on your body will be dependent upon total calories consumed, not the amount of fat. Still, nutritionists are going to hesitate to say that you are not what you eat when it comes to fat. And these graphs ind ind uh, indicate why. So these graphs are looking at the amount of different types of fatty acids that are, cons that are found in your adipose tissue based upon how much your dietary intake of them. So this first graph, here's a, actually an image of body fat, and this first graph is looking at the amount of dietary linoleic acid that's consumed, to so things like vegetable oils, and nuts, and seeds, and as you consume more of it in your diet, you're going to find more of it in your body fat tissue. Same thing with trans fatty acids. You eat more processed donuts and, and microwave popcorn, which are significant sources of trans fatty acids, you're going to find more of that in your body fat. So your body fat reflects the types of fat that you consume and it will reflect the amount that you've consumed over the past two to three years. It can take several months to actually see a change in your body fat composition when you change your dietary fat. So when it comes to types of fats, you are somewhat what you eat. And there are other tissues that are going to be influenced by the type of fat you eat as well. Here is a blood workup that you might see from someone's typical annual uh, physical, and usually in that blood workup you are going to have a lipid panel. So a lipid panel looks at things like cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, triglycerides, and LDL cholesterol. These lipid panels are important because they're going to assess someone's risk for cardiovascular disease. In particular, people will talk about HDL cholesterol as being good cholesterol. And that we want it to be high, the values being high, because it's going to be protective against cardiovascular disease. And then this LDL cholesterol is sometimes called bad cholesterol, because it increases your risk for cardiovascular disease. But let's take a look at what these are, and then we're going to later on look at how dietary intake, the types of fatty acids, can actually influence these values. So first of all, we need to understand what are LDL and HDL. Well, the L's part of that stands for lipoprotein. So the HDL, LDL, lipoprotein. And lipoproteins are particles that are produced by the body We do not eat them. Okay, that's a common error that students will have. So these are particles that are produced by the body, and their purpose is to absorb and transport fat-soluble substances. Our body's water-based, our blood, and our, our, our uh, lymph. So we need these particles, special particles that can transport blood in the body. And here's just a generic lipoprotein. You'll find that there's fats, these fat-soluble substances in the interior of this. Along the outside of it, we're going to find phospholipids. And you'll also have these embedded proteins. So that's why we call it lipoprotein. So here's just generic uh, lipoproteins. There are many different types of lipoproteins in the body. But there are four major ones, and the ones that we're going to look at in this class. So the four major types of lipoproteins are called chylomicrons, VLDL, LDL, and HDL. And so we're going to look at how they differ one from the other, and then link them back to that risk for cardiovascular disease. Starting with chylomicrons. Chylomicrons are the biggest lipoproteins. They're kind of these lumbering giants that, uh, that are found in the blood. If we look at the graph down below, chylomicrons is the first bar. And we can see that they're made up of different types of, of lipids. The biggest one that we'll find in, chy in chylomicrons are triglycerides. So these are triglycerides. 
85% of the lipids found in chylomicrons are triglycerides. As we go down in size, they are going to become more dense. So as we go this direction, they become more dense. And they increase the amount of protein. So if we think about the protein as the outer shell, they essentially get a thicker outer shell, and they're becoming more dense. This color here represents protein, so we can see that that's getting larger as we go from the very low dense to the low density to the high density lipoproteins. If we also think about where they're produced and their function, again, we can relate that back to their risk for cardiovascular disease. Chylomicrons are produced in the small intestines. Its function is to absorb and transport food fats. We sometimes call that exogenous fats. That just means outside the body. And we will clear them. So if you've had a meal with a lot of fat in your diet, you will have chylomicrons. But if you haven't eaten for 12, 14 hours, they actually will be cleared. So that's their purpose, to absorb and transport food fats that formed in the small intestines, and then will be cleared. The VLDL, which stands for very low density lipoproteins, are going to be formed in the liver. And their function is to transport fats produced in the body. And we've got a name for that. We call that endogenous. So exogenous means outside the body. Endogenous means inside the body. And we can produce fats. We know that. If we have a lot of potatoes and candy and sugar and soda pop, we're going to build body fat. So somehow we had to take that carbohydrate and convert it to fat. We do that in the liver. And once we build that up, we've got to package it up and send it out to the rest of the body. In fact, when you have a high amount of carbohydrate in your diet, you will have higher amounts of VLDL, so higher amounts of those triglycerides. LDL stands for low density. And this is also going to be produced in the liver. And it's to transport primarily to transport cholesterol to the body. Let's go over to our graphics, comparing them. So here's the VLDL. We can see that much more triglycerides. And then here is that LDL. Here is the cholesterol. You can see a larger percent of that will be formed from uh, as cholesterol. They're getting denser, smaller, but as a percentage, more of the fats in there would be uh, triglyceride versus cholesterol. Then we have HDLs. Their formation is a little bit different. It will be formed in the liver. It's formed in several places. In the blood, and actually even a little bit is formed in the small intestines because they're being formed almost as a protein, a small little um, particle to begin with, and then it starts collecting cholesterol and it gets more of a, of a, of a lipoprotein as it's, as it's being built. Its for, um, function is to be for reversal transportation, transport, reversal transport of cholesterol back to the liver. So it is going to be you know, formed in these various places in the body, and then it's going around the body and collecting cholesterol and bringing it back to the liver to be processed. If we think of their links with cardiovascular disease, the LDL and VLDL are going to promote cardiovascular disease, and HDL tends to prevent cardiovascular disease. And that is why when people talk about on our blood lipid panels that we talk about HDL as being good cholesterol and LDL being bad cholesterol is because of their function. The cholesterol in them is really not any different, but it's just their link and their purpose and the function. And one is bringing cholesterol back to the body, uh, LDL, and it's more likely to cause those um, metabolic processes that link to cardiovascular disease, and HDL is collecting up that cholesterol, bringing it back to the liver to be processed. 
these lipids can be influenced by the types of fats that we have in our diet. I'm going to take a look at that in the next video.